All right, let's get started. Are we good, Joseph? We're good. Okay, let's let's go. And welcome to this session. We are going to talk about Fedora Cores and and a little bit of the changes that have been happening uh, in the past uh, year, and especially with uh, now with the new Fedora release, Fedora seven release. We have some big major changes uh, were coming coming up. So let, let's get started. So yeah. We're going to do a short intro about what's Fedora Cores, the size of things, uh, what has been uh, happening since last year, uh, and uh, then what's coming next for Fedora Cores. Uh, OK, so let's go. So quick refresher, push reminder now for Fedora Cores, what, what Fedora Cores is. Now it's a, an official Fedora edition. With Fedora 37, we are officially a Fedora edition. That's that starting. Um, we focused on two use two main use cases. So the single node use case, where you spin up the single uh, single node and you have a function as server to run containers, or the second use case, which is focused around containers. When you want to, around clusters, when you want to run a lot of containers at scale on a node of nodes, and you you want to have all those nodes use the same version, etc. Uh, we focus on those two use cases for Fedora Cores. So Fedora Cores initially came as the successor to two container-first operating systems, so Cores Container uh, Linux project and the Fedora Atomic Host project. And it picked up IDs from both projects, picked up the best IDs from both. Uh, so all the way we do provisioning, all the way we are very focused on cloud native experience uh, and uh, from the container Linux side and on the other side, all the, from Fedora, all the Fedora foundation, the packages, the update stack and the S Linux uh, security policies and security enforcements. So, General philosophy behind Fedora Cores is that we focused on having automatic updates enabled by default. So that requires no interaction for administrator, administrators. And um, really, so we make sure that updates happen, happen automatically, and are safe. On the second point is that we have automated provisioning. So we have Every single node in a Fedora cluster, or when you deploy a Fedora Cores system, everything starts from the same point, and then you use ignition to provision a node on first boot, and uh, and and set up secrets, uh, set up configuration, start containers. So the main idea behind that is both of the things enable you to do what we call immutable infrastructure. So it enables you to automate your deployment, your system configurations, and with all that in place, you can like update your configs and reprovision your nodes to apply changes and roll out configuration changes, etc. in a pure immutable infrastructure fashion. But all of that only happens because we have a huge number of tests. So before any single release of Fedora Cores goes out, we run a huge battery of tests across all clouds. Well, not all clouds, but not a good chunk of clouds uh, across QEMU, etc. And we make sure that everything runs smoothly before we push uh, any um, any release out uh, for everybody to to consume via auto updates. So we test that extensively. See uh, how it's kind of like doing a test for a new Fedora uh, release, but every time we do a Fedora Cores release, it's something that we have to do because we want automatic updates to be safe. And so we we doing a lot of effort on that front. So Fedora Cores itself, it comes in different fashion that classic Fedora, uh, that is RPM based and that you update using DNF. Here, instead of having like major releases, we, we still have those in, in behind and behind the scene, but essentially we have update streams. So we have a stable a testing and next uh, update stream and they move along across Fedora major releases at their own pace. So, the one that you want to run for like most of your nodes is a stable stream. It's the most stable and, and tested one. And then we have the testing one, which is like a little bit ahead. So it takes packages, fresh packages from Fedora and gives them small time to back into the testing stream. And two weeks later, it goes into stable. 
when we have a new Fedora module release, so for example, here we have 37, it goes into next first. So when we go, when we, we move into Fedora 37 here, uh, what's happening right now, the next stream is shipping content from Fedora 37. And when it will be released, then we'll move them to testing and then to stay. All right, Fedora Crest itself is available for a lot of cloud platforms and architectures. So uh, I'm not going to list all of them, but like we support a lot of cloud platforms. And for, for, for some that are not directly available, you, you have work runs to, to make that happen. Uh, of course, you can run that on bare metal most of the times. Uh, and yeah, and we support uh, ERC64, ERC, um, x86, uh, almost no, every single architecture that Fedora actually supports. Hey, we have a duplicate site here. All right. Uh, yeah, so PBC64 is, is actually coming really soon. It's like almost ready. Uh, we just need a little bit of tricks. All right, so what's new and for Inferior Crest? What has been happening since last time we talked about this, so about approximately a year ago? And I'll let Clement uh, start on this. Uh, pick, pick, uh, yeah. pick up on this one. Go ahead. Thanks, Clement. Can sure. go on the next slide. So quite a few uh, few things uh, happened. Uh, some, like Timothy mentioned, uh, we might go a bit uh, deeper in, in some, some of them. And, like, um, so the first one is obviously in Fedora 37, we're becoming a top level edition. Uh, so that was actually quite a good um, process to go through when we, um, I'd like to uh, work a bit closer from uh, with the Fedora QA to be part of like the go, no go uh, release process and have like some release criteria that we can, um, we can verify. Um, also, we are going to try, like we're trying, we participating more in the Fedora uh, change process and like be a bit more aligned also with the, the six months uh, release uh, cadence of, uh, of Fedora. And yeah, and something that we're just continuing is to uh, release Fedora chorus every every couple of weeks. So Timote mentioned some uh, platform we've added uh, in the last year. So ar 64 was a big one. Uh, S390X is also uh, was added recently. Uh, we added like support for Nutanix. Um, and another big thing is like uh, that uh, Fedora Core OS is now uh, embedded in Podman. And if you um, use the Podman machine common, you actually have like a Fedora Core OS uh, VM uh, running and, um, that allows you to run like containers on a, on a remote host. Um, we also uh, added support to the DNF Contme um, in RPM OS um, So that was like a really interesting change for us to also try to get a bit more uh, data and uh, statistics. So this is the same implementation as is currently in DNF. So it's uh, pr privacy preserving and um, it gives us some kind of, uh, of um, information about how many Fedora calls uh, servers are running there. So if you want to go to the next slide. So we have like to, this, uh, this is like all the nodes. So the, the difference between transient and static is like transient is like the nodes that stays up for less than a week. And statics are nodes that stay uh, for longer than, than that stay on uh, for longer than one, one week. So I think we are reaching uh, like around 16,000 uh, static nodes. And all together, we are like uh, over 30,000 uh, nodes. So with the company stat, we can go a bit deeper and try to, to understand a bit more like how those nodes are, are spread. So you can see here like uh, the number of, uh, so all those uh, numbers are for the statics uh, nodes. So the one that stays for longer than one week on. And you can see like the spread for federal releases um, and also for uh, architectures. So, so you see, we, we started to have like support for S390X and uh, we have like also a couple of uh, PowerPC nodes uh, now, but uh, we see how, uh, how this, uh, this evolved into, uh, into the next year also. Um, yeah, next slide. Some other big uh, changes and uh, some things that um, was to uh, migrate IP tables to actually using NF tables. Um, and this was like, um, um, like an unintended consequence of, uh, of like the behavior of alternatives on, on Fedora core OS. 
and we have like some documentation on uh, how to, to actually use that uh, since the alternative comments is uh, is uh, not working in uh, in Fedora core. So if you're like in specifically interested on that, uh, there is a bit more like history there and uh, a bit more uh, information. Um, so building, yeah. So we Timothy mentioned like the three official streams we have. So stable testing. And next, we also now have like a raw ride uh, stream uh, that we use to pretty much we do a, a build every day using raw ride content. And it's ready for us to be able to run our automated test and try to, to catch early uh, any potential breakage that happens in raw ride. So that's allow us to, to maybe flag uh, a bit earlier if there is anything that breaks uh, Fedora core OS. And that also enables us to sometimes to um, uh, fix things before they they arrived into our next uh, our testing stream. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> this is the best slide, by the way. And a lot of other stuff. So uh, in the last few months, we spent a lot of time into our uh, pipeline. So we try, we trying to uh, merge the Fedora CoreOS pipeline and the internal pipeline we're using to build uh, Rail CoreOS. So we've done a lot of uh, of improvement into our our build pipelines and testing, and how we publish images and things like that. So uh, that has been like a, a quite a lot of efforts there, and um, uh, we'll continue to to work in, into that area also. All right, next slide, and I believe it's for Joseph. Yep. So. Uh, we're talking a little bit of what is coming soon to Fedora Core OS. Uh, support for new architectures and platforms. Um, uh, Azure ARM instances, uh, GCP ARM instances, uh, support for the Azure community galleries, which allow you to share your, your images to, to communities in, in Azure. Uh, PowerPC architecture support. Uh, we're adding also support for Qbert and for the S390X architecture, we're adding secure execution support. Um, that's a quick slide. And the, the other thing I'm going to, uh, we can move to the, to the next slide. I'm going to try to talk about this real quick and, and hopefully do a little demo. Um, a, a big feature that we are, uh, sharing it, uh, it's already implemented. It's the CoreOS layering and OS3 native containers feature. Uh, basically, we're now uh, offering Fedora CoreOS as a container. The, the CoreOS OS3 is offered as a container, which is uh, OCI compliant container, um, which allows you to use this Fedora CoreOS container as part of your container builds, uh, it, like in the prompt line to use as your base image. Uh, it lets you do derivations from, from that uh, initial base image, adding new packages, um, adding config files, and it lets you distribute it in the same way that you would do any other container image. Uh, so you can push it to Quay, you can push it to the GitHub repositories, Docker Hub, or whatever container registry you're using. Um, something that changes once uh, you decide to use this feature is that now that you are on, in charge of the uh, updates, uh, we are still in discussions and, and working towards a uh, uh, solution for automatic updates with Cathy and, and see how that's going to evolve. But uh, currently, uh, you will just need to rebuild the image that you like you would do any other container build that you have, push it to your repo, and run RPM OS3 upgrade, and you will get the updates. So let's see if I can quickly demo this. Um, I think, uh, it, let's see the other slide. And here are the two current changes. Uh, we have one that's already approved and was approved for Fedora 36. Um, that is the first one we have there. And there's a proposed change that will expand this work to uh, basically try to make this a more cohesive cohesive Fedora feature, not just a Fedora Core OS feature, and many, many other things included in that proposal. So please go read it, uh, comment, and, and 
help us push this forward. Um, and yeah, let's see if I can share my screen real quick here uh, because the next slides are just the, the steps I'm going to go through. Oh, this was quite easy. Uh, so let's um, let's start with with the with with the Docker file. In this example, I'm just going to have a very simple Docker file that is using Fedora Core OS Next. It's Fedora thirty seven at the moment. It's doing. It has one line. It's very long, but the only thing it's doing is adding the Telscale repo and installing it. And this just cleans up the, the RPM cache, uh, enables the Telscale service. And this is uh, making sure that that OS3 container, uh, that OS3 commit, uh, it's um, parsed and, and, and we do some checks there to make sure everything looks good. Like any other Docker file, we are just going to put and build this. I already built it for the sake of time, so it's going to be super quick. So I have my, this was successfully built. And the next step that you do when you build something, if you want to consume it in another system, uh, you, you'll have to push it. So I just stack this locally as localhost telescale. Um, and now I'm just pushing that into my own repo in Quay. Hopefully this will be super quick too. I already pre-pushed it to, for the sake of time and that's all done. Okay, so we built it in the same way we would do any other container. We added stuff in the same way we would do with any other container. Uh, we have one line just for the sake of uh, cleanliness of, of multiple layers, but uh, I'll, you can add multiple lines, and as long as as uh, you do the OS3 container comment, we'll make sure it's it's checked. But it doesn't even need to be the last line in the in the Docker file. And, um, basically, whatever you're doing now with your builds, the container builds, you can probably try to to use it here. Um, I should talk real quickly. We have a bunch of different examples here about those. Uh, how to different examples of what you can do in, in a container build, uh, stuff with Ansible, doing configuration inside the Docker build, replacing the kernel, uh, running, injecting a Go binary. So not even an RPM, it, it goes into USR bin, that kind of stuff. So I encourage uh, the community to go and see the correct layering examples and play with them. So once my system, my image is in the repo. The next step is I want to actually use it. And what I want to do here, this is let's. This is my VM in this case. This can be your bare metal installation of Fedora Core OS. It can be any any system the, the, that is running Fedora Core OS. The only thing I have done this is I have disabled Syncati. Uh, as I said, that's still not supported. Uh, and uh, now, the only thing I need to do is call RP, uh, sudo rpm os3. Actually, let me show that I am not doing any, any cheating, right? So, telescale is not there. Um, I'm, when I rebase, I'm going to do an rpm os3 rebase, and I'm going to cheat a little bit and copy it from here, which is quite long. And the only thing this is doing, it's doing a rebase, dash dash experimental. Uh, we're setting a flag saying this is an unverified registry. This is not an official blessed uh, Fedora registry. And uh, just pointing to that Quay IO uh, repo that I just pushed to. So I'm going to Press enter, and this is downloading all those layers, those changes between what is installed in my host and what is in my image. Uh, uh, there can be downgrades of packages, upgrades of packages, uh, new files put into the file system. Um, now the source of truth is the Docker file that I just pushed. And 
then mm, it should take not too much longer, but it's downloading a few things. Um, and then the next thing that I just need to do is reboot. And my new system should be based on my on my new base image, and it should have tail scale there. And while that is cooking, maybe I'll have time to show what happens. Oh, well, that's done. OK, so that added tail scale. Uh, I did it a bunch of downgrades and stuff just because I downloaded the, a, a very early next uh, for my host. So we're ready to go. I just need to do to the reboot. And once the system comes back, if nothing exploded, uh, we should have tail scale. Installing the system and the service should be running because we started it as part of that Docker uh, command, right? As, as part of that Docker build. So system CTL status tail scale. Uh, tail system. That's not good. Uh, let's see what's happening here. Oh, yeah, of course. Tail scale service. And there is this running, and version we have Telcel running. So this shows that it just it worked, right? It was a pretty easy process. I it's just one command in your host, and you do your builds and push in the same way that you have done it. Uh, if I wanted to update this, for example, I wanted to just add a config file. I just need to change my my docker file build it push uh um, and that's hold, it. Hold. yeah thank thanks children hold. i'm i'm continuing out because we have to take yeah, some time yeah. for questions but looks great it looked great that was good all right so let me share back this slide where we have all we info to join us and let's take a look at the Q&A. Okay, let's start with the oldest one first. What is the focus on moving packages upstream to Flatpak or other portable package system? Is there any? It seems it would be conflicting somewhat. It was really okay, so Flatpak is for desktops. For Federal OS, we are server side. We are for servers. So we you would have to look at packages, what well, Flatpak packages for desktop application. We don't really use Flatpaks in Federal OS by default. Uh, and Flatpak does not conflict at all with OS3 because essentially uh, it's what's used in Federal and White and Silverblue. Okay, next question is how has the image-based summit in Berlin reshaped your goals for the edition in the coming year? Um, so I was there in the image-based summit uh, and representing all the LP industry um, based uh, variants of Fedora. And uh, yeah, we had a lot of discussion and we're looking at the next steps, uh, uh, how to make that happen, how to improve the security of the distributions, uh, et cetera, and how we distribute that. So yeah, that's, we're looking at it. It's it's work in progress. And last question I have, what happens when you want to remove stuff in the layer? Uh, maybe Joseph, you can take that. Yeah, so the, the only thing you would need to do is just change it in your Docker file, build it, push it to your repo. And in your host, you just have to run RPM OS3 upgrade, and it will do it for you. Now, instead of cracking the OS3 repositories for, for Fedora, your host will be tracking your repo. So anything that you push to that repo, it becomes the source of truth. So if you remove stuff, add stuff, it, you're in control. Just running RPM OS3 upgrade will, will take care of that for you. All right. Thanks. I think that's all we have for questions. And that's all the time that we have. So we're going to close this one out. Thanks for joining us. And of course, if we 
did not answer your questions or if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to us on the info here. I'll post the slides into the wiki so that you can click on the links, etc. Anything like that. All right. Thanks, folks. See you next time.